again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick and I officially have a cramp all over my body. So if I do weird things, She's everyone is just randomly weird. I'll be it's like, a crampy oh. weird. Yeah. Oh yeah, this yeah. one up here. I get that I one try right here. I get that a lot from stress. If I, well, a combination of things. If I'm stressed that that's where I feel at first. But I sometimes if I sleep too long. Well, that's certainly no, not that what happened. No, but I'm just saying, like, if I go, if I get right. an hour or two longer for some bizarre reason, I get up and I'm usually stiff right in that spot. So, so I had a pain here in my back mm. for like 47 yeah. years, <laughs> and then I won a massage at a NHLA dinner, it. and it was from this like huge guy who was like six foot six, and he gave me a two hour massage. It's the best hundred bucks I ever spent, and after that, it was gone. And it's I was, just a knot. And it was just, just a I was just like, wow, that pain went away. But today it's back, yeah. but it's going to go away. I tried a new yoga routine, trying new things. It's an important part of life, but sometimes it'll give you cramps. There is your, <laughs> <laughs> there is your wisdom for the day, guys. Uh. <laughs> so we were talking before the show and we're both like, I haven't read the paper in like a I week. I feel like, uh, well, I have it here so different, <laughs> to um, cheat. Okay, so this is my funny little, not, not funny at all when I said, this is my, well, this is weird. So I like to buy and sell things on Facebook Marketplace. A lot of times the things I'm buying are just, ran I mean, random things. So I find this lady in Goffstown who's got this folding table. I don't need a folding table, <laughs> but it is a nice little table. It was 10 bucks. It'll be great for camping or when I'm sewing. It was like, okay. So I we've been playing back and forth. Oh my it, God, maybe you can help me. Fix my bobbin. My oh, sewing yeah, machine is so no. hard to use no. that I was like, I don't know how to. I actually just watched a video last night before I went to bed about the the evolution of a oh, sewing machine. Oh my and god, how they work. Like... It is interesting because I never could understand how it did, how it picked up the thread. Uh, but anyways, okay. Um, so yesterday, I finally, me and this woman finally, you know, figure out a time, and she goes, "I'll just leave it outside, leave me the money under the mat." So I drive up to Joffrey Street, which is up in. Penardville, right. so it's right up the road, not yeah. a big deal. Um, and I do it, and I get the thing, and I come home, and I do some things, and then I pick up my phone, and I see that there's a like a homicide investigation on Joffrey Street, and I'm like this, wait a minute. I'm I was literally just there, and I messaged the woman this morning, and she said, you must have missed it by like 10 minutes. Wow. Because it was like within the hour that it had happened. So from yeah. what I can tell from the gossip I hear is the son, I think, killed the mother, stabbed the mother. So they are saying that it is a mysterious, so investigating a woman's suspicious yeah. death in a Gosstown yeah. home. But, they, but they're also saying that for, nobody has but, to be concerned because I'm pretty sure it's the son who recently moved in. Right. But then also, you know, I mean, this is the part that actually jumped out at me was, of course, they locked down Bartlett School. Which is not, well, I guess. And I'm yeah, just that was like, a bit. It's you not know, right I, next door. No, but also it's like you, if if someone got stabbed in their home over there, right? And and most murders are Hard either people. crimes of passion, mm. someone you know, home, uh, uh, motor vehicle stuff. Right. It's very rarely. Well, uh, and shouldn't the reaction instead of locking down the st school just notify the schools in the area that you know we're investigating a crime over here? Just be aware, but well, they don't so have to the make problem it into is, a, mm. The problem is the liability laws in America are a mess. Yeah, that's what And I mean. basically, we have messed up everything. Lawyers are the worst. I'm going to tell you my favorite joke, which is, what do you call a thousand lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? A good start. Yes. So, <laughs> and I'm a lawyer, so, you know, just uh, it's, regarded it's as true, some... It's though, because some, everybody sues for everything. Well, so the schools and all these people who are extremely risk-averse, right? right. So, so basically, we created what the government system has created is basically a matrix of fear everyone there are too many rules so no one knows if it's, they're following the rules because there's literally too many of them right. so everyone is scared all the time of like am I gonna do it wrong am I gonna do it wrong am yeah. I gonna get into trouble yeah. and so everyone functions under a heightened sense of anxiety for liability that isn't real in this world we've created and so the schools lock down because what if what if something happens and somebody's gonna and then sue someone the school? blames that right? right and it's like look the the, the likelihood 
So I, I had a great mentor when I started lawyering. Um, I think it was at my first or second job in the States at Logitech, which, you know, is the yeah, mouse yeah. company, right? And I remember she said to me, my, the, the um, general counsel, she said, you know, the way you have to look at risk is there's, there's, uh, there's real risk, but it's looming so far away and it's so unlikely that it's going to happen yeah. that you can't actually operate on this outlier yeah. that might, might, might happen, right? But that's the system we now suffer right. under, frankly. Well, like, not the same and not, but it, it reminds me of the same thing. And I'm not justifying the necessarily action of this person, but just in the past week or so, there was some guy, I think it was Manchester, Somebody was stealing the motorcycle out of his driveway and oh, he wow. sees it. Like he's in his house and he sees somebody stealing his motorcycle and driving off with it. So he jumps in his, I think he calls the police, but I'm not sure. But he jumps in his truck and to chase him and eventually runs into the guy on the motorcycle. The guy driving the truck got arrested. And I just thought, I don't know. Like, is he the wrong? I mean, maybe he shouldn't have probably hit the guy because he could have ca caused him serious. I mean, that is still assault. But, but, it's, but, but he stole supposed... my property. And like, what, well, and also is... there's supposed to be uh, some Reasonable. level of, of uh, not reciprocity, but but equalness Re in, in, in response. Yeah. So so the other one from today's paper, of course, is this murder trial. So first oh, of yeah. all, I was just, I was, you know, I haven't read the paper. And then I was going through it really quickly. And I was like, man, did we just stack all our murders at the last part of the year or something? It's because murder season. New Hampshire has really low It seems like all the trials rates. are definitely happening and right now. And that could be sort of the, the post-COVID things are coming out. But this one is murder trial opens in Manchester. And I I, I do vaguely remember I this remember. was something in yep. front of a bar somewhere. Yeah, in front of a goat bar. In front of Soho. Or, yeah, yeah, so outside the goat bar and grill. Yeah. But then it said here... It said, hold on, it, it was like, uh, he was looking for a reason to use his gun and he got exactly what he wanted. This, of course, is right. the, the state because they're making the argument that this wasn't self-defense, it right. was murder. Okay, fine. But then, um, so, but then police say D Lee shot, so the guy who shot the other yeah. guy, so let's say D shot P around one o'clock after the victim yeah. punched the yes. other guy in the face. And I'm like, you shouldn't go around punching people right. in the face and, and because you, someone might shoot but you. I, and the pro I think the I mean it's not it's not it doesn't justify shooting, shooting him, him. But I mean I at the time I did the same thing because I was like, wait, what happened? Because people don't generally I mean like that's unusual and you can't possibly it'll depend on how good his attorneys are. They'll have to convince a jury that he was that the shooter was still in reactive mode. Because not only was there an altercation brought on by the victim inside the bar, the guy that did the shooting might have been a jerk in the bar. I don't know. It still doesn't justify like people fighting, punt, cold cocking you in the right. head or anything. But the the guy who was dead, who was littler, so then people are like, oh, he was a littler. Yeah, but he's like also a um, judo guy or, you know, like. Right. So he hits this guy, like, and you're causing this this tension. And then there, he, the shooter's outside, and there's question whether he went to his car and got his gun or whatever. See, but, now that would be, then I unless, would say it's not self-defense. Unless he was going back and he was trying to protect, like, it, there's well, a lot well, of de-escalation no, no, that but, so he, Exactly, because he I'm kind of like, left. yes. I, I, if you... So, so uh, a lot of people I know actually always carry, yes. right? So, uh, I, I, uh, most of the people in my community, everyone yeah. has a firearm on them. I right. might have one right now. Who knows? I don't have one right now, but <laughs> someone near me usually does. <laughs> right, and so, and so it's it's. I mean, there's responsibility, yes. of course, that comes with carrying a firearm. Yes. But the reason you carry it is so that if some maniac or crazy person assaults you, you, you have, have a way to protect yourself. Right now, I, you know, and and shoot him in the foot you know right. but uh, so but my point is just there was someone who punched someone yeah. else first and i'm like so we also have to understand from a societal perspective you can't just go around so i'm going to play devil advocate here and i don't remember all the details but here's a scenario so the so shooter gets hit in the bar and then somebody starts a fight with him and he go, the goes outside and he doesn't want to leave his evening 
it's not required because that guy's a, punched me in the head, right? Let's just say, what if he did go back to his vehicle? I don't know if he did or didn't, but what if he went back to his vehicle to arm himself? Because now he is like, well, if I'm going to go back and see, you know, hang out with my friends, now I feel weird because this guy just punched me in the head. So, so maybe. So I, I, I'm going to preface what you're about to say with the following. It's one o'clock in the morning yeah, and alcohol home. is Oh, yeah, that's involved. always a problem. So I'm, everyone has impaired yeah. judgment and they're not making so the now best you're choices. So now you're hanging out. You go back to hanging out doing whatever it was you were doing that wasn't shooting people. <laughs> Somewhere this this puncher. Less drinking and shooting. Got more back just in, got shooting back drinks. in that space. <laughs> right. So you're, you're continuing to instigate. But, I mean, have you... It, it was bad. The whole I mean, thing was bad. You, this, this, the guy who shot him probably doesn't deserve to spend, you know, decades in prison. But I don't know how you deter people from being stupid. And, like, because this is the problem. The guy that shot the person at the mall. Like, okay, road rage. You don't shoot people. You know, like, it's life's too short to be that upset over... Well, it's also, I mean, it is it is indicative of an inability to uh, uh, maintain or manage one's own, uh, like your em own emotional state, right? Like you shouldn't go from zero to 100. Now, of course, we all do it. Honestly, it I was in a road rage incident once. Uh, I mean, the person was road raging on yeah. me. But arguably, I started right, it, so right. I actually like started me, okay, with a little, bit, a little of, uh, bit of a, I mean, assertive, I, well, I, I, I cut him off because it's a turn here. So okay, I mean, God I made a bid. Though you know, the world's not going to end because somebody cuts you off. Sorry, uh, saying so. Uh, I just got a warning because I'm having way too fun a time chatting. So I will watch my mouth. I'm sorry, that. producers. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so they're supposed to be. I mean, I guess the takeaway here is don't murder other people. No. Don't, don't do dumb well, stuff just, when mean, you're drunk. You, and and you see it. I mean, there, look how many accidents there are and everything lately. And that's not just because somehow cars have gotten dangerous or roads have gotten I have a theory. It just says that people aren't. What do you think? I, 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 honestly, so, so my theory is um, the, the vaccines cause inflammation. Inflammation causes uh, literally, I mean, inflammation in a very crass but elegant sense is like hell on a cellular level, mm -hmm. right? So if you're inflamed, your cells are actually mad, they're burning yeah. and they're whatever. So you actually, I think a lot of anxiety and a lot of these things actually come from disease. Mm -hmm. So people are inflamed and that inflammation actually makes you not exercise the best judgment. Mm. I'm basing that 100% on my own personal experience. Uh, but I know when I fixed my inflammation problems, that crazy anxiety, aggressive energy that people have, yep. right, where you go from zero to 100 instead of just kind of going, Oh, yeah, let me take a breath here. Let me, you know, and, and use the techniques that we know. So I think I think hmm. there's there's unhealth and disease that has been caused by what we experienced for the past three years. And then, honestly, I think social media is well, being I do. used I people to are dial hyped up. people Everybody's up. hyped up. So, like, I mean, you see it sometimes. And there's always been people who are aggressive drivers. And I'm a f I don't think I'm an aggressive driver. Like, I want to move my vehicle, but that doesn't mean I'm cutting people off left and right. I just, I want to keep moving. I joke in the car all the time. I'm like, pedal faster. <laughs> like, little car in front of me, just pedal faster. But you see these accidents and you think people are just like zooming around without regard for anything around them. And it this t hasn't always been like this. And it just seems to be constant now. And so, I don't know, did we just totally break people besides the vaccines? Did we just totally break people because they weren't driving for a year? I, well, you know, I don't and then know, now but they're it, just broken forever. I, I don't mean, know. The, the insurance numbers, I haven't looked in a while, but they did go up and they did say that there were more accidents taking place and whatever. And that could be I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. Hard. Driving's a little like, you know, you get back on the horse kind just of thing. Just riding a bike. Yeah. Like driving well, a car, you just do it. I mean. It, but, but you know, be it as it may. But I, I, think, I do think people's I responses think there's a, are heightened. There, there's a there's a extreme unbalance mm. in the world. And we're not going to fix it until we all fix ourselves. I, I posted actually something on my Facebook this morning. I thought it was 
uh, profound. It was some some uh, Marcus Aurelius quote from you know way back in the day. But basically, this this notion of this duality. I think what we struggle with or what we don't grapple with anymore is we're part of a universe, mm -hmm. right? So in some ways, we could argue we're one organism, mm -hmm. right? And this is where the thinking of we're all one comes from, right? Okay, great, that's true. But we're also all individuals, yeah. right? So if people can think about it as we're one organism, but each of us is a cell in that organism. And our job in life is to make your cell, your unit, as Function. healthy and functioning and humming and in synchronicity right. and in balance with your cell so because you're it's your, the cell right <laughs> so if your cell is just working on your cell then you're going to figure out what your actual purpose is mm -hmm. and you're going to achieve a better life possibly enlightenment but that's the conversation for another day right and so we're in this this thing where everyone has been almost like split apart mm. right because no one is when you're told if you focus on yourself you're told you're selfish and I'm like, no, I actually think that the social contract between all of us, this is a little Randian, but is basically like your job is to not be a burden on other people. Yep. That's your only social contract. Yep. That's the only job you have is don't like go don't be a don't, burden on your neighbor. I mean, it's that simple. Right. And if everyone just did that, we'd have a much better society. We, uh, things would be pretty good. So the recipe is there, but the reality is people don't want to eat right. They want to eat junk. People don't want to give up their sugar. They don't want to people do the want, hard well, things. People don't want to make choices. I mean, we we say this a lot. I say it a lot anyways, is, you know, there's all, uh, you know, the housing market is tough right now. Um, it, I can't imagine being a being back at my whatever, however I old I was, 34 years old and buying my first home. Yeah. But the reality, or, or imagine becoming a real estate agent yeah, in the no. last, you but know, I mean, six but, but I also know <laughs> that I didn't buy my first home till I was 34, and that was okay. And I didn't buy my dream home. I bought the house that I could afford, and I lived in that house right. that because that was the real, realistic, reasonable thing to do. And there are so many people who are so impatient to. And they make choices. Well, like if you're choosing, if you're saying to me with a straight face that I can't possibly save money for a down payment on a house. I can appreciate that not everybody can save money. That I can appreciate. But if you can afford to go, say, on a two-week vacation to Mexico every year, and you're walking around with the, the best of the best phones, and you just got a brand new tattoo, and you're getting your nails done, and you're driving a truck that's, you know, got a $560 payment, and you got all these things, my brain says, oh, but you could save for the down payment. You just have to choose which is more important to you. But I think also people don't understand that anymore and maybe they don't fully grasp it i mean you know you see the memes on social media all the time where people are like why don't we teach children how to <laughs> meditate some yoga how to balance a checkbook where money comes from <laughs> like uh, how to cook how to be a functioning human i mean it's it's like school where we trap children for 12 years to make them compliant the only thing school is designed to do is to make you obedient and then you have to ask yourself obedient to whom right. like you know, who are you so are you either with your nice truck trying to impress the joneses why right. um, or is your or it or are you still living in the thought that you have to have material things to, to be so, be a real you know to be a full self-worth yeah have self-worth and, and, and that's, that's and you know what if that works for you that's fine but then don't pr say you can't you can't be on, you're not being honest. It's just like a lot of people, I'll be honest, I will be honest, a lot of people on subsidi that get subsidized, you know, subsidized groceries, they get subsidized apartments, they get all this assistance, heating assistance, all this stuff. And then you see them and you think, I don't know, those shoes are more, those are expensive or they've got, you know, I'm not saying people shouldn't be able to have nice things, but there's a cost to having nice things, and you often have to well, give up one thing to get another until you can get ahead. Which 
actually teaches you certain skills, right? So if you sacrifice to get what you want, then you appreciate it more. If you start with the crappy house and, yep. you, you know, you work a second or a third job. Yep. I mean, I've done all yep. of those things Me in too. my life. Um, I mean, the first apartment I lived in in America <laughs> was like a crack house with dead people, you right. know? But that's what you do to get to the I next step. I was an step. immigrant and I had a suitcase and no job. And so you you try and you you continue to improve yep. but i don't think we are giving people the tools anymore to aspirationally understand those things and get there and the sad thing is i'm sorry to say but the kids these days now i sound like i've earned Not my right. gray hair but it's i true. think are in a model of unhealth that is so far removed like people have no sense of good food anymore mm. every i mean i think something like 90 plus percent of Americans are vitamin D deficient. Yeah, vitamin D is a kicker. So so it's like, how, how are we here? Like the food that you can buy in grocery stores has no nutrition in it. Yeah. <laughs> even the good stuff, even if you're just shopping the outside yeah. aisles and eating whole foods, you still have to supplement because the nutritional quality of that food isn't right anymore. Yeah. So basically, I think everyone's like a little, I'm sorry, I'm going <laughs> to offend everyone back home, but everyone is a little challenged and retarded in the true sense so of you're that. not like, you're not developing full, right. in the way that you should um, because we live in a society well, and that's I think, pretty I think unhealthy. You come, and you start with that, right? The physical health. That's and, all because and I had it, a cramp in my shoulder, Tammy. And, well, <laughs> and then you add to it the mental, this entitlement mentality and this victimhood mentality yes. that generations are just putting, teaching that to the children that, you know, you're never at fault. You're the victim. Right. You know, I mean, we always joke about it and you joke about it like, but you know, when, when I was a kid, if you did something wrong and you knew when you were doing things that were wrong, <laughs> you were the worst thing was going home and finding out that your parents knew that you did something right. wrong because you weren't going to, you were going to be in, You're trouble. in trouble. They weren't going to make <laughs> excuses for you. You know what I mean? They were just, it just wasn't going to happen. And now, I, you know, you still see some parents that are really good at it, but you see so many that just aren't. But also the victim mentality goes back to that question of for whom? Whom are you obeying here, right? And and who who would create a victim? Why, why would you have a victim dynamic? You have a victim dynamic when you're trying to manipulate someone or uh overpower mm -hmm. not empower like the opposite of that right like where you're like i i am i'm um lesser than yes right oh woe is me or right. you know, i can't do, do without that. you doing for me because i'm not quality enough to be able to even do that but but that's like a training yes. that i think just just breaks down our spirit for lack of a better right. way to kind of explain well, it, it right it is true. like people sometimes will say to me like the guy, my neighbor one day saw me out there and I was building something, I don't know. And he goes, you'll do any, like, you just do anything. And I'm thinking, well, I wanted this. I'm just going to do this. But so many people don't have even enough self-confidence to think they can do things. Because one, maybe they don't have the skills, but you know what? YouTube will teach you anything. Yeah. I, I, I've done it before on the show, but I'm always like, shout out to the old dads who yeah. had to like know things. Right, had to build it with know, a hammer. We're putting in the, our floor in the basement yeah. finally. We're gonna get it done before the end of the year, I swear, because I wrote it down in a book somewhere. <laughs> but. Um, uh, you know, like, we're like, oh, how, how do you, do you do like, how do you do this? Yep. Like, oh, you know, and it's great because now we're like, you don't have to make the same mistakes other people yep. did. So you, you can know? watch and they're like, don't do this, do this. this. And you're you like, know? oh, I can do that. Um, but yeah, so, so you make things. Mm -hmm. uh, I paint things or yep. I cook things or whatever, right? right? The, the, the source of that, the kernel is creation. Right. So I think we're all put on earth to create something. And the mission is to figure out what you want to create. And so if you're just consuming, if you're just a consumer, you're just playing video games and you're just, you know, like uh, buying stuff and and whatever, but you're never feeding your creative side. Mm -hmm. I think that is also something that is kind of making humanity yeah. a little sad. Because when you build, I mean, I get a lot of like I could afford to if i need to when we built our deck 
I could afford to just pay somebody to right? come and build the entire deck. Yeah, we could. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think we need to build the deck because well, why but not? Also, why then not? every time you sit in the deck I'm or you like, walk we past built this. the deck. We built this. You know, it's sort of like, um, you know, I, I, I love to cook, right? Right. And, uh, and I always take my food photos and I put up little videos and, you know, and, and, there was a part of me that's like, oh, that's kind of lame. And then I'm like, no, maybe I'll be the next Martha Stewart. You never know. I could be a late bloomer. But um, but then I thought, what do I love about cooking? And besides the fact that you're genuinely nourishing, yeah. right? Like, it's kind of like medicine. It's a little witchy. You know, I'm like, I, I, I make an effort to be like, this is good food. That's good for me yeah. and for my friends and my yeah, yeah. family and my husband. And um, But then I'm like, there's there's a beautiful death in it too right like you have this project I you know I cook from scratch every day and so you're you're doing a project every day yeah. that you literally devour right yeah, yeah. so you've made something so it's a full cycle of a little project you start it you do it you finish it you and enjoy it's it. done right and you enjoyed it and so I was like why don't more people enjoy cooking just for that reason right. like it it's actually, not it doesn't have to be a, a chore. chore you can change just your like mindset gardening. gardening does not need to be a chore right so I think we got the warning and we should probably yeah, we should cover go. something so the trees the, what uh, can festival we tell people? of trees yeah. at framers market this weekend uh Friday noon to seven and Saturday 10 a.m. till after the Christmas parade is over um, that's at Framers Market which is 1301 Elm Street which is a couple blocks up near Orange Street on Elm Street obviously um, this benefits Freedom Movement New Hampshire you can get tickets to bid on the various trees um, for like 20 bucks for a whole sheet of tickets and we'll put them out on social media and I'm gonna put too. it out on social media um, probably Thursday night early Friday morning pictures of the various trees so that it so that people can see things and Maybe it'll drive them down, and I'm going to put out my Venmo address, and if people want to send me the money, I'll drop the money in the things for them. Um, whatever makes it easy for people to help contribute is, is all And I really, you're just helping a uh, private charity to yep. help people who need that help, who are actually on the path of improving yep. their own lives. Yep. Because you know what? You can't change until you choose to do it. Truth. That's all we got. Um, we'll be back next week. Hopefully, I'll be able to report that the tree festival is a huge success. Um, in the meantime, don't get stressed out over the holidays. They are literally just days on a calendar. Um, <laughs> and they're supposed to be fun. To be what fun. is wrong so with keep us? keep them fun. Don't get caught up in the stress. Uh, we'll be back next week. Take care.